Welcome into another edition of the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. I'm Tom Leach, along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Simulcasting. And we're doing two podcasts, separate podcasts this weekend. Uh, one for the Breeders' Cup preview races at Belmont, and this one for the Breeders' Cup preview races at Santa Anita. They have uh, six stakes races on their card, five of them graded, and um, four, or rather all five, are uh, are grade ones. So uh, we're going to get to those in just a second. But first, uh, Jim, just a, a heads up to folks that if they uh, are not going to the football game Saturday night, they can head out to Keeneland and watch Churchill Downs as well as the end of the Santa Anita card and stay in touch with the football too. It's a huge day. You can actually start two options. You could come and watch all the uh, Belmont races, then go to the football game. And Belmont races, as we did in the other podcast, are, are Breeders' Cup quality races. The Jockey Club Gold Cup is just like a Breeders' Cup classic. And uh, you can go do that if you're not going to a football game. Uh, we'll have a football game on TV for you. You can come out and play the uh, Churchill Downs Handicapping Contest. First post at Churchill at 6 o'clock. And that's the last uh, night for uh, the last night race for Churchill in September. They close down on Sunday for their September meet. Of course, we open at Kingland a week from Friday. So we are, uh, we're we're ready to go with live racing here as well. And um... – Churchill um, has a couple of stakes races on, on their card for Saturday night. Let's go to the first of the grade ones at Santa Anita, and it's the fifth race on their card, the Chandelier for two-year-old fillies at a mile and a 16th. So you've got these these babies stretching out, uh, most if not all of them, for the first time around two turns. Where did you go? This one's tough. I mean, you look at two-year-olds and, and you try to figure out who is going to improve with the, uh, with the extra distance. And I went with... Um, I was I was between a couple of of Baffert horses and I went with Fascinating. It looks like that coming out of the Del Mar Derby that uh, that that this filly really wants more distance. She got beat by She's a Tiger, but she was coming at the end. Um, and her buyer progression is something I really love in a two-year-old. It's gone 57, 66, 79, which is a perfect pattern. If he, if she runs in the mid 80s here and continues the improvement, she's going to win this race. Awesome Baby was the other one that actually regressed in the um, Del Mar Derby and, and, and didn't didn't run very well. Looks like she got caught up in an inside speed duel around 44 and 4 at the half. Whether she's going to like stretching out to mile 16th, I'm not sure. It depends on whether Garcia can harness that speed a little bit. But that's the two Baffert horses that I liked. Uh, the other horse that I thought had a shot at improving was Dan Hendricks' Bell of the, Bell of the Fleet. Uh, caught a really tough field uh, at, at Del Mar and came back and, and broke her maiden next time out on, on the last weekend at Del Mar. So she's running a 73 and a 77. Uh, those are my picks. Uh, it, it's a educated guess, but I'm going to think fascinating might be the, the, the best filly in here. I went the other way with Awesome Baby, and it, it was between those two for me, those two Bafferts. And Awesome Baby looked awesome in her debut and then kind of spit the bit when she went to seven furlongs. So you think, well, maybe she just doesn't, she's just a sprinter. But on pedigree, uh, she is – every indication that she'll just love two turns. So I'm going to bet that maybe the speed duel was the, the issue there and that she uh, wires them in this spot. And uh, I would use her with fascinating and also uh, Colonel Joan and um, Antiquity. Uh, but I, I think there's a good chance that the, the one fascinating of the five awesome baby, I feel pretty strong on one of those two, will get the money in the chandelier. Sixth race, the grade one Rodeo Drive for Phillies and Mayors three and up going a mile and a quarter on the turf. And marketing mix is a slight favorite over Tis Flirtatious here. And I'm going with Tis Flirtatious. I was real disappointed in marketing mix's race at Arlington. And uh, sometimes when those uh, older Phillies and Mayors start to go off their peak a little bit, they don't always bounce right back. And so I'm going to say that's where marketing mix may be headed and go with Tis Flirtatious who was real impressive last time out in her win at Del Mar. She loves Santa Anita as well. So I'll play her to win, and then I'll key her in exactas with uh, the one topic and the two Lady of Shamrock. How'd you see this one? Um, I'm with you on trying to beat marketing mix. I, I was very disappointed in her race at uh, at Arlington. I thought she was uh, the class of the field there, and uh, a couple of Europeans just made her look really bad. I, 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 did, I think she may be not quite – as good as she was last year when she won this race, but she won this race by two and a quarter last year and just uh, easily. But she hasn't topped that buyer figure since then. She, she did run 99 in a, in a mile and a half race at uh, Hollywood. 
I'm going to go with a price in here, and I'm going to take a horse that uh, Larry Jones has shipped uh, starstruck across the country from Monmouth, uh, won the grade three matchmaker last out pretty easily, uh, stretching out to a mile and a quarter for the first time, but uh, had, had some good races in Ireland. And I, I just have a feeling with Larry Jones shipping this horse over to the uh, to the West Coast, I think she's got a shot, and, and she's not going to get much play in here with this flirtatious and my GG and Lady of Shamrock and Marketing mix. So I might get eight or nine to one on this horse, and I, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take Star Tru- Starstruck over Tis Flirtatious and Marketing mix. Seventh race is the Grade ro- Grade One front runner. It's for two year olds for the boys going mile the sixteenth on the dirt and. I couldn't find anybody that, that really excited me in here, so I would just say don't take a short price. Where did you go? I don't, yeah, I, the shortest price is probably going to be Tamarando, who looked good in Del Mar Futurity, uh, beat with Dance with Fate and Can the Man. Of those three, Can the Man may have, uh, he ducked in, didn't, didn't look real experienced in that race. Um, he may improve, but again, the horses have only been out twice. Through the Hard Rocks look good breaking his maiden at Del Mar. I think you can, if you can go a little deeper here, but you've got really limited information with the horses that are only run a couple of times, and it's that way in two-year-old races when you when you look at these horses jumping up into a Grade One. I'm going to take the three horses that that have raced in the three in the Grade One before at Del Mar, and I'm going to say, can the man might be a little better priced than Tamarando, and uh, might take him on on top of those two. I ended up going to a horse coming off a maiden breaking win at Santa Rosa of all places, but he is trained by Bob Baffert and uh, out of an APND mare by Midnight Loot. So uh, I think he'll, he'll like the two turns and I just like the way he finished up in that uh, first race on dirt at Santa Rosa and I could see him improving around two turns. So I'm going to take him thinking he's nine to two on the morning line and, and you may get every bit of that. Ontology intrigued me a little bit because he's, he got four starts under his belt, and the last one's at a mile. Now he goes turf to dirt. And at 10 to 1, down on the inside, I, I think he's worth a look. And I ended up uh, writing for my Weekend Warrior blog, a uh, suggesting a four-horse exacta box here of Round Up the Loot, Ontology, uh, the two School of Hard Rocks, and the six Tamarando. But uh, this one was, was hard for me to come up with a real strong opinion. The eighth race is not a stake, so we'll move on to the ninth, which is the grade one Zenyatta. And here you've got uh, the Oaks runner-up, Beholder, uh, a champion two-year-old. You've got Authenticity shipping in from the uh, east off some big numbers. Uh, joyful victories in here. Where did you go? I'm going with the price here again. I'm trying to find some value at Santa Anita, and I'm going to take Mr. Kenny McPeak with Flashy American. Shipping out from Churchill, uh, ran right behind Authenticity, and I think Authenticity is going to get a lot more play than Flashy American based on uh, her Saratoga form. So... I'm going to take a, a little bit of a price here. Uh, Beholder's going to be tough to beat, uh, but she didn't run that well at Del Mar last out. I mean, she only got a 78 buyer after running consistently in the 90s and, and almost uh, almost beating Princess of Silmar in, in the Oaks. So even though she won a pretty weak race, she was 1-9 to nine that day uh, in the Torrey Pines. I don't know how much she got out of that. I don't know if she's going to be fully cranked for this one. And I, I'm just going to take Flashy American with a, at a, as a price on top. In a pick three or pick four, I would include Authenticity and Beholder, sir. I went price shopping as well, and I ended up with more chocolate. It's, it's a stretch, but I like the fact that she ran her two best races of her life on the Santa Anita main track, and it's the first time she's been back on it since mid-March. And she's 12-1 to 1 on the morning line, so if she can get back to that level, uh, it would fit with the, the top ones in here. So I'm going to take more chocolate. And then key here in exactas with beholder and authenticity, and um, you know if I, if I went one step more, I think flashy Americans is the next one I would take. But more chocolate for a price play for me. Tenth race, the Grade One Awesome Again Stakes, a prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic. Golden Ticket was entered here and in the Homecoming Classic at Churchill, and from what I read, is expected to go here. And that's who I ended up picking. He's in career best form. And either one of the buyer figures from his last two races would put him right here in the mix with the best in here. Uh, Painter was so impressive first out, but has just regressed in, in the next two starts. And he's the, the morning line favorite, and I think he's a very vulnerable favorite. Mucho Macho Man ran well at Santa Anita in the Breeders' Cup last year and uh, is uh, shipping out early here after missing uh, a chance to run in the Woodward when it came up sloppy. So uh, he'd 
probably for me be the one to beat. But I'm going to go Golden Ticket and then key him with uh, Mucho Macho Man and with Summer Hit in Exactas and just leave out Painter altogether. How would you see it? I don't think you can leave Painter out. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that uh, the trip to New York was kind of like some of these horses going to Dubai for Painter. He he had a really <laughs> bad time. He, he he hit the gate. I just don't think he was ever in the race up there. And I'm gonna completely toss it on a sloppy track. Uh, he he was fractious in the gate. He just came out badly. I, I just think you can completely throw that race out. And if you if you do that, the San Diego handicap, you say you regress. You got beat by Kettlecorn, which is a pretty good horse at, at, at Del Mar. Um, I think he's got a real shot in here. I think um, if he goes back to that that 114 that he got at, no. at Hollywood Park, nobody's going to touch it. No. Now, can he do that on San Anita's dirt? Uh, he he ran in the San Anita Derby last year, but uh, he, he's inexperienced on this on this dirt course. He's a, he's a question mark, but I think he's he's that good, and I and I am going to take him on top with Mucho Macho Man. Golden Ticket, and maybe Liaison to get a piece at a price. But I'm going to take Painter on top. And uh, the 11th race is an ungraded stake, the uh, unzip me uh, down the hill on the turf course for three-year-old fillies, and we might see one or more of these come back in the uh, the Breeders' Cup race. It's, uh, it's a course that's six and a half furlongs down the hill at Santa Anita that uh, is a real specialist kind of uh, distance and, and uh, race to compete in. And so I like to find horses that have done well uh, on that course at that distance. And um, Richard Mandela has a horse in here that hadn't been out since back in the winter. And it just looks like his classic kind of move. It's the 10 Moulin de Mougan, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And uh, coming off a long layoff, and I could just see her running big as a tune-up for the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. And running big might mean she runs second or third, but I think the price will be good enough to, to take a shot. So uh, I did uh, get intrigued by that one, so I threw that one in. Um, it's going to be a, a great uh, weekend, and you know it, it's going to be really fun to kind of reflect on this uh, early next week and go back and look at some replays and decide which of these horses we want to play come Breeders' Cup time. Yeah, it's uh, it, it certainly is a great preview weekend. I, I know a lot of New York people really look at this as their Breeders' Cup because if they, they a lot of them don't want to ship out to California uh, every year. They'd like to have the Breeders' Cup back in New York. But uh, they they put together a nice card, and the Jockey Club Gold Cup is truly as, as oh. maybe as good a race as the Breeders' Cup Classic this year. Absolutely. Uh, Jim, best of luck. And, uh, again, don't forget the uh, handicapping contest for the Churchill races on Saturday night. And um, we'll wish everybody best of luck with the picks. Don't forget, if you're listening to uh, this podcast, that we also did one on the Belmont races, so a separate podcast for that. Uh, for Jim Goodman, I'm Tom Leach for the End of Money podcast at KeenelandSelect.com.